Haigazian University is one of the most revered higher education institutions in Lebanon with a particular mission inspired by its Armenian evangelical calling. It was co-founded in October 1955 as a liberal arts college by the Union of Armenian Evangelical Churches in the Near East and the Armenian Missionary Association of America. Its objective was to assist in the preparation of teachers and pastors and also to offer the Armenian community both local and refugee from the successive waves of deportation and genocide, a higher education of prime quality. But over the years, Haigazian developed into a diverse university with an inclusive Lebanese student and faculty body. Its campus is located in Hamra, in the heart of Beirut, and it has weathered numerous crises that have hit the country. After the end of the Lebanese Civil War of 1975-1990, it went through a beautiful renovation and revival and is now a proud haven for academia. Why do I say this? I say this because I know I have seen it with my own eyes on many an occasion. Reverend Dr. Paul Hydostian has been at the helm of this institution as president for 18 continuous years, leading it to ever newer levels of development and success. But like many other institutions in Lebanon today, this university finds itself buffeted by the severe upheavals affecting the country, name them, economic, uh, political, and others. In this very brief episode of Intuitive Reactions, the MENA and Gulf regions, I have the genuine pleasure, and do trust me it is genuine, of welcoming via YouTube from Beirut, the president of Haigazian University, in a sense the skipper of this academic boat, who has been working tirelessly to keep the university in terms of its faculty, its students, and its unique mission afloat during this latest crisis. So as I welcome Dr. Paul Hydostian, let me just go straight in, conscious as I am of the time limitations, with my first question. Paul, what are the most serious challenges facing the university today given the dramatic collapse of the Lebanese economy, the depreciating currency, and perhaps one of the deepest political crises of Lebanon. Uh, first, thank you so much, uh, Harry. Dr. Hagopian, uh, it's a pleasure to be with you in this conversation. Thank you so much, and directly to the answer. Uh, the past eight months have been quite difficult for Haigazian and for Lebanon. As a university, as a community, as family, we have been having many challenges. But as Haigazian University, probably uh, there were five difficult points. One, to move the university educational system within two or three weeks into an online system, which is not what we did before. Online teaching and online learning are not, not necessarily the same. Mm -hmm. So we were teaching people, we thought or we think still, but what they learned is something else. This has been a major challenge. A second challenge has been dealing with a very rapidly deteriorating economic situation, especially losing trust in the Lebanese banking system. And that has led to tremendous economic challenges. The third one has been the limited chances to cooperate with other academia universities globally in the past few months due to difficulty of travel, budget cuts, cancellation of conferences, research programs, and, and so on. The fourth one is and has been and will continue to be to work with anxious people, anxiety. 
anxious students, anxious staff, anxious faculty, maybe here and there an anxious president. As in nervous. And, uh, as in nervous. Nervous, anxious, worried, okay. unclear, and anxious in that sense. And okay. fifth, probably, is to go through these months and completing a semester while not knowing what's coming next. That is, come late August with a new academic year, what is Lebanon to look like? Is the student, the university student, going to still choose to go to higher education? Is the student going to stay at university and pay a penny, the penny that they have already lost? Um, so these have been probably the most uh, difficult challenges of the past months of economic, um, uh, political um, protest moods and, and, and the pandemic and all these that you asked about. Okay, Paul, that is great. So now we've got the setting of the five challenges that have faced you over the past few months. And thank you for adding the protests in the streets as well as the very serious coronavirus pandemic that has hampered, I'm sure, your work like it has hampered the work of many other universities worldwide. Let me quickly jump into my uh, second question, and my viewers are quite used to my jumping in and out because they know that I'm always anxious myself about the time factor. I'm going to put you two questions so I don't interrupt your flow. There are two questions in one. First, what have been the most important messages that you've cared to send as president to the Haigazian community in these hugely challenging times. And here is the appendage. What are the sparks of hope and resilience that help sustain you? Because in addition to being an, a man of academia, you also are a man of faith. Thank you so much. Um, I'll start with the key word for me personally, and I believe for higher education in the Haigazian University type of culture. And the word is very clearly mission. Mission means that we feel, and I personally feel, that part of the future here will depend on how we act, what we speak, what messages we send, uh, what messages of hope, of uh, support, uh, of solidarity we send to our students and to the community. So it is to work with a sense of mission. Uh, and I believe that education and hope are closely connected. I mean, if I fail in promoting hope, expressing hope, living the hope, I don't feel that I'm, I'm, I'm capable of continuing a mission in education. I think this is, this is a key word. It is a message that I've repeated, uh, not only through uh, written messages uh, to the community, to our academic community, but also through interviews in the media, uh, personal uh, meetings with the students, from whom I keep learning so much. Um, part, of the, part of the energy I personally get is because I'm a student-oriented administrator, academician. Um, and I'm, I'm, I, it's, it's food for thought, for my mind, for my soul, and for my plans to be with the students. So there's a mission. And, and that is something that has to be projected. Um, we're not here in an, any type of business. We, we have the, the, the happy uh, burden, should we say, of uh, controlling part of the future, uh, shaping up people. Uh, but shaping is not an academic curriculum. Shaping up the future of the new generation is, is also the type of values that we project. Another word I, I would say um, in, our sense of uh, in our sense of mission, as I said, is, is hope. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, there is a next year. Yes, there's a next semester. And in my messages, I always said, starting October 17, when the Lebanese protests and revolution or whatever people may choose to name what has been happening 
which has components of everything that we, we said. Um, in that revolution, revolutionary approach, people were losing hope. Um, and in any time of turmoil, we have to show the students that there's a next semester, there's a next academic year. And uh, I was always saying to students, um, you need to do a few things. One, keep your positivity. Uh, find something positive in what's happening in online learning, in the pandemic, in the protests, in the turmoil, in, 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 in all sorts of collapses that Lebanon has been going through. The second one was telling them that we are here to help them to complete the academic year, complete the semester. We will. We will find every way and so on and so forth. And the third one was always in this, you know, uh, that there is a better future we will prepare for. We don't prepare for a worse future. In education, we prepare for a better future. That's, that's education yeah. fundamentally. Now, where do we get this energy from? Where should I get energy from? Um, well, we're an Armenian run, Armenian owned institution of higher education. And we are also a very Lebanese university. Now, we are helped by our past experience. We are helped by our past uh, pain, but also success. Mm -hmm. uh, Armenians and the rebuilding of lives, wherever they went. Lebanon and rebirth after every turmoil. In my years, I mean, in my 58 years, should I say, of life, uh, I've seen Lebanon collapse more than once. Mm -hmm. And I've seen uh, people around me say, this is it, Lebanon is not going to come back. Um, and we see that no Lebanon comes back and comes back and comes back. And I think our past experience as Armenians and as Lebanese are there to support us also now. But uh, you also mentioned, I'm, I'm also a person of faith, a man of faith. And um, in faith, we know that it is not the circumstances that dictate what we do with the young generation, with our lives, and how we relate to the others, and how we respond to problems, and so on. I mean, if we let circumstances tell us what should happen or what we should do, how we should think, how we should feel, then there is no faith. That's not faith. Mm -hmm. um, so much of faith is the picture and vision of a future that otherwise cannot be seen, but only by the eyes of faith. Um, this is not to deceive ourselves, um, but it is to have a plan, to put our trust in God, to put our, our, our ears and eyes into our history and say, okay, what have we learned? And as I said, and as I started, uh, it's a sense of mission. We're going to do this. Why? Because there is a future and we want to shape part of that future in a good way. That's, I believe, part of Haigazian's history. Haigazian is the name of a martyr, an educator, Armenak Haigazian, Reverend Armenak, who was a uh, part of the victims, uh, one of the victims of the genocide. And here we are. He died there. We created the university. I think that's the resilience we believe in. Paul, that was beautiful. And I'm sure that a lot of the viewers across Europe, institutional and personal, will be very inspired as well as very interested with what you said. So to wrap it up very quickly, all I need to do abruptly is to say thank you very much once again, good luck, and in order to put a dash of tribal ethnocentrism in it, let me end with an Armenian Varskat Misht Gadar and good luck. It was a pleasure, Harry. Thanks so much. <laughs>